Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Today I have for you my second episode of solo frontline PvP, this time sporting the Sage, which in the current meta is a slept on role. Your limit break can shut down immense amounts of damage, and can even be used aggressively. This class is extremely fun and can deal some amazing damage into teams that pile up. Today's match is on the Seal Rock, in which I land 9 kills to 1.3 million damage. I shall be covering my thought process and strategies during this round. Let me know if you enjoy these solo style videos. Enjoy today's video and I shall see you all in the next one. Starting with the south spawn, myself and the team divide between the center and the beachside portion of the map. A lucky spawn grants us both one B rank and one A rank just west of our own spawn. When passing through mid, you can see the immortals were fully engaged with the maelstrom. This means we do not need many defending south. That would be a wasted opportunity. Instead, I rotate east to help ensure my team snag the B rank for early point advantage and to obtain any free battle high charge. Divide your match into three parts. That first two 300 score does not matter. This is your time to build battle highs if you can. Obviously, capture zones, but do not shy away from fights, as the end game almost always comes down to battle highs flipping the match. Once the Maelstrom regrouped, they push south to contest us, and a good habit to get into as a range roll is to be with your team, but spread away from the mass of your team. Expect a Dark Knight in every team fight. Spread out and give them less targets to snare. My aims during this first fight is simple. Pump damage into those breaking away from the pack, typically tanks, apply dots, as this ability will catch many players off guard. And most of all, apply large AoE damage with Toxicon. I do throw Phlegma into the mix, but only while I feel the team can benefit from this extra damage. While being confident, I can make an escape. However, our team composition puts us at a huge disadvantage. The Maelstrom do a much greater job at pumping huge amounts of damage into the mass of my team, forcing many early deaths. Again, this is early round, so do not get discouraged for the first 300 score, as all three teams are sizing each other up. Play to live, note I already have Battle High 1. As a solo player, play for you. Do not overcommit trying to save allies and trust your instincts. If you feel your team has made the wrong play, if you feel your team has made the wrong play, again, play to live and build your Battle High. As you can tell, I could clearly see this fight was lost. My split second decision to full bail, while being ready with my recuperates, narrowly saves me from death. However, the Maelstrom force sending it into us left them vulnerable to a flank from the Immortal Flame. This gives me the time to elixir up. Even if you're down a few thousand health and missing 1000 MP, get into the habit of filling back up before a recontest. The more resources you have, the more options you have available to you. The few of us who were left were able to successfully stick around, picking off those who were overconfident. Then while the Maelstrom respawn, the Immortal Flame are in a bad spot. Caught between two teams, both respawning and regrouping. Again holding back, I am not giving chase. Instead we are shutting down those attempting to retreat with a choke, boosting myself to a battle high too, just as new zones are coming online. This is the chance to fall back and regroup, and my limit break is now ready for the next engagement. I play rather aggressive with mine, and use a macro I made to cast it at my own feet. Once again we get an easy node spawn to the south, while both teams are engaged to the north. This leaves us with the chance to contest the beach. However, this time, the Maelstrom are far more prepared, and this is where I get risky. I wanted to force out abilities, crowd control, limit breaks and burst damage, and this is where my macro comes in useful. I select my target, dive in deep, and drop the limit break at my feet. After a few seconds, it becomes clear my team are still struggling to gain any ground, even with so much attention upon myself. I fall back, and with the Sage, their limit break can be placed twice. This allowed for a fairly easy escape. The typical back and forth unfolds, until the Maelstrom start dropping powerful limit breaks. We are not going to win this objective, that is very clear. However, we can still claim kills, reducing the total amount they earned for this zone, which once again adds to your own battle high. As soon as I see their Dark Knight make his move for Salted Earth, this was my indication to leave. We have done all we can here, and very nearly have a battle high free. So for now, I fall back to rejoin the team respawning, heading west, who are currently engaged with the Immortals.
Now this is where the second phase of the match begins. With some lucky spawns for the Immortals, not only did they catch up, but they claimed the lead. So now we need to balance focus on killing any Immortals we can, while also going for objectives. Any battle highs obtained in the first phase really start to show their impact from this point on. We chase those left behind while heading to mid. This time I am dropping my limit break around the objective. It never fails to bait a few players in, landing me a cheeky kill. With the Immortals also joining the fray, I drop back and reposition the limit break, which if you watch carefully, did save myself and a few others damage from a Southern Cross Red Mage limit break. Immortals are the main focus, yes, however the Maelstrom are still hungry to engage with us. Many times you will see people complaining in chat, telling you to stop fighting them. The problem there is too many players listen to this and leave, and those left behind get stomped. It is far better to deal with the threat in front of you. The sooner we force Maelstrom back, the sooner we can engage with the Immortals, but as you can see they are playing rather smart, holding back within the cave entrance. They are waiting to third party, which makes for the perfect chance to do our own third party, to once again boost battle highs. During this time I acquire battle high 4, and the team claims the objective, and if I see any chance to throw a Toxicon into the Immortals, I take it. Does not matter if a Maelstrom claims the kill, we just want to slow their score down, which has only moved 30 to 40 score since we rotated to mid. Take a look at how I've been positioning. I stay back but close enough for follow up, keeping out of range of those Dark Knights and Warriors, while ready to jump in on those singled out. As soon as the Immortals begin their push, I retreat to the cliff edge for natural cover. This way I can pop in and out for easy damage. I continue this strat back and forth until new zones begin spawning in. We can now leave mid, since the Immortals will no longer contest, as there is now nothing to obtain. Instead we can now rotate southwest for the moment we have been waiting for, in which we can finally engage the Immortals uninterrupted. I start this engagement with a limit break at the bottom of the stairs. I do not believe I could make it up the ramp, and I do not trust my team enough to follow up, instead aiming this limit break as a chance for my allies to move in further together completely safe, hopefully building confidence. As you can see, the very moment we spot the Immortals, we are forced out. At first looks like a losing battle, however they invest limit breaks to no success, and with the Maelstrom's flank from the north, their attention is divided. This is what I mean by dealing with the threat in front of you first. With their push now severely weakened, now is the time to go full aggressive, claiming many kills for the team and boosting myself to a level 5 battle high. Moving on, we have rotated to engage with the Maelstrom. I move on ahead to lead the charge, and this is where my own overconfidence gets me killed, as this time around, the Maelstrom do not fall for my limit break shit a second time. Smart players knew this time to force me out, and with immunity no longer in play, the Maelstrom are able to successfully combo off through my team, and now would be easy for many to start worrying over the score. We are moving into the final third of the round, with both the Maelstrom and the Immortals racing against one another. They now need to force focus on one another and zones for that final push. This once again allows us to pick off targets, claim zones that spawn away from the main fight, and from here on out, this is where my team begins to shine. You can see my squad are building their own battle highs. We are moving much more as a group. This allowed us to maintain control over how fast the other teams were obtaining score. With this, the round was coming to a close, with the perfect balance of objective capture, while showcasing how important the battle high is in the late game. 
Not only did we rapidly catch up on score, we claimed the win. I will end the commentary there, as you do not need me repeating the same tactics. Enjoy watching how this match plays out. Thank you for watching, and good luck to all you Sage players out there.